If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. We know that when the resistors are connected in series that the equivalent resistance is equal to the sum of the two resistances. Let's take a closer look at that. Now, of course, we don't know the individual values of the resistances. That's, in fact, what we're looking for. So this equation will not be sufficient. What we can do is look at the equation that relates the power of these two series resistors. And in the power equation, we see that the power is equal to the current squared multiplied by the series resistance. Now, we'll notice that the question gives us the total current in the series arrangement of resistors, so we're going to be able to plug that in for I. And then for the value of RS, we're going to plug in the sum of the two resistances that we found just a moment ago. Now, after plugging in the current and the equivalent resistance, we can, of course, square the current to simplify the equation. Also, the question gives us the power of this series arrangement of resistors, and it equals 225 watts, so we can plug in 225 into the equation. Next, we can divide both sides of the equation by 25 in order to solve for R1 plus R2. And when we do that, we can see that the sum of the resistances is equal to 9. So this is one equation that's going to be helpful, but since we have two unknowns, we're going to need to generate a second equation. And to get the second equation, we can go to the second part of the question, which tells us that with the same total current, the power is 50 watts when these resistors are connected in parallel. So let's take a look at the equation that relates parallel resistors. So in the case of parallel resistors, of course, we have the reciprocal type of equation, and it's going to be useful to solve this equation for r sub p rather than having 1 over r sub p. So to do that, we're going to actually have to combine the two fractions on the right-hand side, and that will require finding a common denominator. So we're going to have to multiply the denominator by r2 as well as the numerator as well. And then we're going to have to multiply this denominator by r1 and then the numerator by r1. And by doing this, we can see the common denominator is r1, r2. Once we have the common denominator, we can actually condense this fraction into a single fraction as follows. And then once we have a single fraction on the right side as well as a single fraction on the left side, there's an algebraic trick whereby you can invert both fractions. And so this will allow us to solve for RP instead of 1 over RP. So once we have the value for RP isolated, we're going to return to the power equation since we were given the power for the parallel combination of resistors. So here again is that equation. Notice the question said that we have the same total current, so we're going to be able to plug in the 5 amps of current that we used in the first part of the problem, and then the expression for RP is going to be substituted in as well. And then actually if we want, we can go ahead and substitute in the power into the equation too. And then we can square the 5 to make 25, and then we'll divide both sides by 25 so that we can isolate the variables on one side. Now, at this point, if we study the right-hand side carefully, we can see in the denominator we have the term R1 plus R2. It's written backwards in a sense, but it's still the same thing as what we had solved for earlier. Remember that R1 plus R2 is equal to 9. So we're going to actually be able to plug 9 into this equation. And then furthermore, if we go back to the first equation, if we subtract R1 from both sides of that equation, we could see that 9 minus R1 is equal to R2. So, in other words, we're going to substitute for R2 the expression 9 minus R1. And then 9 will be substituted again in the denominator. And then what's nice about this equation is that it has only one variable, R1, and so we can start to actually solve for one of the resistances. We'll go ahead and distribute the R1 into the parentheses. We can then multiply both sides of the equation by 9. And of course the 9's will cancel here. And then since we have the variable squared, we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. So to do that, we need to get all the terms moved to one side so that the other side is equal to 0. So we'll add the r1 squared over to the left side and then subtract the 9r1 also over to the left side. And actually, this equation turns out to be factorable. So we could either factor this particular equation or use the quadratic formula. And so if we were to factor it, you would have r1 minus 3 r1 minus 6, and that would still be set equal to 0. When you solve those, you would get r1 equals 3, or r1 equals 6. 
So those are the correct answers for R1. We'll get R2 in just a moment, but before doing that, let's just use the quadratic formula just in case your expression doesn't factor. So here the quadratic formula is set up. Notice that the A value is 1, the B value is negative 9, and then the C value would be positive 18. And then we would plug into the quadratic formula. And again, if we simplified that out, we would get either 3 or 6. Now to get R2, we simply remember that R2 is equal to 9 minus R1. It actually doesn't matter which value we assign to R1 because R1 was an arbitrary label. So for example, if we let R1 equal 3, that means that R2, if we come back over to this equation, would be 9 minus 3, which would give us 6. And so R2 could be 6. And then you could actually solve it the other way by letting R1 equal 6, and in that case R2 would end up equaling 3. But again, those labels are arbitrary, so you don't have to do that. So in conclusion, R1 is equal to 3 ohms, and then R2 is equal to 6 ohms. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. And remember that you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I'll do my best to post an answer to it on YouTube.